Hi friends, I am Dr. Mohammad Adil Asfan. I am consultant surgical gastroenterologist, advanced laparoscopic and hepatopancreobility surgeon at Maitri Hospitals. Uh, today, as part of our uh, GA surgery series, I am going to discuss about briefly about Whipple's procedure. Uh, Whipple's procedure is also known as pancreatic or duodenectomy. As the name suggests, it removes the neck of pancreas and the entire duodenum. So, it's usually indicated uh, for all malignancies arising in those areas, especially the periampillary malignancies, the carcinoma head of pancreas and carcinoma in duodenum. So, today I am going to discuss about a case who a patient who has come to us is a 50 year old male who has come with uh, obstructive jaundice over the past 2 months, loss of appetite and loss of weight and initial evaluation revealed a periampillary mass. So, he underwent stenting, ERCP stenting for uh, improvement in the jaundice as well as in Im improvement in his nutritional status. Following that uh, we did a CT scan, the CT scan showed that it was a resectable malignancy as it was a periampillary malignancy we had planned for a Whipple's procedure. So whenever we are planning for a Whipple's procedure it is uh, imperative uh, to have a very good preoperative evaluation especially the radiology. So we did a CT scan we found that uh, he had a resectable malignancy. So the next step was uh, to plan for a Whipple's procedure. So we undertook the patient for Whipple's procedure. For any patient who undergoes a Whipple's procedure, it is imperative that we rule out metastasis in the first attempt. So we did a diagnostic laparoscopy for that patient. We didn't find any metastasis. So the next step was to find out whether it is locally resectable or not. So resectability is defined by the absence of an invasion of uh, a major portal vein or any major arteries surrounding the malignancies. So when we explored the patient, we found that it was a resectable tumor. Uh, that is, uh, the tumor was away from the portal vein and there was no invasion of any major arteries. So we, for the next step, we planned for a major resection. That is Whipple's procedure. So normally for a Whipple's procedure, we end in after initial diagnostic laparoscopy or a laparotomy we try to find out whether there are any metastasis which we had done in this patient the second step is to find out whether it, whether it is locally resectable or not which we did in this patient so the step uh, involved here is uh, uh, tunneling of the pancreatic neck away from the portal vein to find out whether it is uh, invading the portal vein especially in carcinoma head of pancreas once these steps are done then we the first major step of Whipple's procedure that is resection is planned. So during the process of resection, we had to plan out where exactly we have to divide the stomach or the duodenum. So depending upon the surgeon's preferences as well as the location of the tumor, uh, the pa patient undergoes either a distal gastrectomy or division of the duodenum followed by mobilization of the gallbladder and the CBD and division of the CBD. This is followed by division of jejunum around 20 centimeters away from the DJ flexure or whichever is a little bit comfortable for the jejunum to come up into the right hypochondrium. And finally, removal of the neck of the pancreas by dividing the neck of the pancreas and mobilization of the uncinate process from the portal vein and from the superior mesenteric artery. So in, in our patient, the entire process was easy because uh, there was no invasion of any of the above structures and we had pla planned the surgery in a proper uh, meticulous way. So post-operatively the patient uh, didn't have any complications and he was discharged on post-op day 8. Uh, with regard to Whipple surgery it is imperative that uh, the reconstruction steps are also proper, uh, properly followed. So in the initial reconstruction is of the pancreas that is the end part of the pancreas is anastomosed with either jejunum in a dunking way or a pancreatic jejunostomy with a duct to mucosa way or by doing a pancreatic gastrostomy. The second step is doing a anastomosis of CBD with the jejunum that is known as hepatic jejunostomy. The third step is a gastro jejunostomy that is anastomosing stomach with intestine. And some of the some of the surgeons do prefer to put a feeding genostomy so that we can start on feeds early. All such steps were meticulously followed in this patient also, and the result was that he was discharged within eight days without any post-operative complications. Of all the major anastomosis, 
the pancreatic jejunostomy is the crux of the entire whipple surgery because uh, pancreatic jejunostomy is the anastomosis which is prone to leaks and these leaks uh, lead to a lot of complications which include sepsis late secondary bleeding and presence of delayed gastric emptying a uh, variety of factors are uh, known to influence the pancreatic jejunostomy however we are not going to go into depth of it so our <coughs> to have a very good post operative outcome we need a proper pre operative evaluation a meticulous surgery and a meticulous post operative management thank you thank you mm -hmm.